What's up, everyone? Cordy Cox here in the Nesson Digital Studio for another episode of Football Now, presented by Polar Fleece, the official uniform of New England. It's been two weeks since we've seen the Pats in action and three weeks since we've seen a Patriots win. But hey, we heard from Nikhil Harry, finally. You know, it's been great just, just going out there with the mentality just to get better every day, just, just going out there, just trying to do my best to get better and um, you know, get better at something every day, so it's been good. Nikhil was activated to the Patriots roster in week nine, but was inactive on the game day roster against the Ravens. So the big question will be if we see him on the field against the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday. And while it's a question for most of us, Mohamed Sanu gave some insight. Like he's been around for a little bit and just got to let him go out and have fun. Don't let him think too much of it. I know it's his first NFL game and whatever he's going to feel, he's going to feel, but let him go out there, have fun and play football. Well, if he makes his debut with the Pats, it will be a game against a team that the Pats haven't seen since Super Bowl 52. Yeah, tough loss for the Patriots that year. Something that Tom Brady says he still thinks about, as do all of the Patriots, like Devin McCourty. Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you play in that game, like I still remember 46 when we lost to the Giants. Still remember when I lost the state championship when I was 12. Like you, you don't forget anytime you can play for a championship and you don't win it. It's just, um, I think something that that sticks with you. You always want plays back. You want to do things differently, um, but it doesn't like control your day to day. But you always, I think you always think about it. The Eagles are second in the NFC East, having a bit of an up and down season. They're five and four on the season so far, winning their last two games before their own bye week. The team presents a challenge because of their two athletic tight ends, Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard. According to Sharp Football, the Eagles run 12 personnel more than any other team, 40%. Meanwhile, the Patriots have seen opponents use the 12 personnel grouping fewer than any team. They used two tight end sets more than really any football team. Um, and then the, the two type of tight ends they have, like both those guys um, are four, seven, four, six guys. They run great routes, they split out wide. So um, whether you call it, you know, 12 with two tight ends or is it 11, you know, with three receivers, like they have that kind of versatility. And how about this for some post bye week stats? Buckle in. You probably already know that the Pats tend to do well following losses and buys. Well, with Bill Belichick at the helm, the Pats are 14 and five after the bye week. That dates back to 2000. And with Tom Brady starting at QB, they're 13 and four. So what about after losses? Well, since 2001, the Pats have been very tough to beat twice in a row, going 51 and 13 after losses. And finally, the Pats haven't lost after the bye week when losing the game before a bye week since 2002, going 3 and 0 in that scenario. And now it's time to head to Gillette Stadium for Doug Kide to answer all of your Patriots questions in this week's mailbag. I had to think about teams real quick there in my brain fried. Uh <laughs> Hello and welcome to this week's Mailbag. I'm Doug Kide. If you have a question for me, tweet it to me at Doug Kide using the hashtag MailDoug and I will try to answer it. First question here comes from Brian. Bri Bri the Sly Guy who asks, it's the AFC Championship, Ravens hosting the Patriots, who wins? It's a very good question, Brian. And since the Ravens just beat the Patriots in Baltimore, I would have to lean towards the Ravens and that's why getting home field advantage Getting that number one seed is extremely important for the Patriots as they head into the toughest part of their schedule now. They have to come out of this season with more wins than the Ravens. That sounds extremely obvious and sort of John Madden-esque, but now the fact that the Ravens have that win over the Patriots gives them the tiebreaker. So Patriots obviously have to treat the regular season very seriously because they do not want to have to go back into Baltimore when the playoffs are on. Second question here comes from Frank who asks, which of the next four games, Philly, Dallas, Houston, KC, will be the most challenging for the Patriots? I'm thinking they lose to Houston, win the rest. I would have to agree with you actually that Houston is the toughest game left on the Patriots schedule, especially since that is on the road. I think that this week's game against the Eagles also will be pretty difficult for the Patriots since it is on the road as well. I do think the Patriots come out of those games against the Cowboys and the Chiefs with wins, but before the Patriots lost to the Ravens, I kind of identified those two games against Philly and against Houston as games the Patriots could potentially lose, especially since they're facing more experienced quarterbacks in those games against uh, Deshaun Watson and against Carson Wentz. 
Thanks, Doug. Now let's talk some social media, shall we? Tom Brady active on Twitter this week, showing support to another Boston team. Marcus Smart held his charity bowling event, and Brady retweeted, showing some support, saying, Great work, Marcus. Keep it up. And he's helping you with your holiday shopping. Hope my dad isn't watching this, because I think I'm taking a page from TB12, and he's getting some TB12 swag. And if you're a James Corden fan like me, you may recognize someone on his talk show. Would hate to sit behind Gronk in an audience. Six, seven, hey, down in front. And that will do it for me. Thanks so much for tuning in. Reminder, Patriots back in action this weekend on the road in Philadelphia. A Super Bowl rematch against the Eagles. 4.25 p.m. kickoff with the pregame chat with Michaela Vernava and Matt Chatham right here at 2 p.m. Bye, guys.